good morning from my side. Uh, in case you do not speak English, it's time to put on the uh, translation. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to talk to you about um, uh, intuitive industries and innovation in, in the industrial environment uh, today. Um, I think you've had the chance to uh, listen to some presentations, maybe be in the Innovation Hub and uh, look at some of the new offerings that we have. And um, I'd like to um, look with you a little bit uh, also further into the future of, uh, of industry. My name is uh, Peter Herwig. I lead the industrial business of Schneider Electric on a, on a global basis. And uh, I've spent my life in automation. So, um, and uh, I guess for many of you of uh, our customers, once uh, you are in automation, uh, it seems to be a destiny uh, for the rest of the life and um, uh, because it's uh, exciting. Um, and uh, the innovative change that we're seeing today uh, is even more exciting, uh, I think, because we, we see some fundamental changes in, uh, in the industry. We see fundamental changes um, also, of course, uh, through our eyes of, um, of, of Schneider as we look into the market of, um, uh, of energy management and of automation. And uh, many of them are coming together as many of our customers, um, of course, worry about um, uh, resources that they're using, uh, worry about cost of um, uh, energy, and uh, worry about um, uh, their competitiveness. Now, if we, um, if we look at what's, uh, what's happening in respect to uh, powering the economy, uh, we see that the worldwide power capacity will double until the year 2040. That's um, a humongous development, uh, while at the same time, of course, we see a lot of renewables coming to the market, so quite a disruption in the energy chain that we've, um, that we've known for 100 years, being um, production, transmission, distribution, and then usage. Uh, that's, of course, totally changing. And um, uh, with those um, uh, changes, of course, you require a deployment of uh, digital and software solutions uh, to resolve that problem. Uh, but you also require uh, the um, digital solutions uh, to uh, further enhance your, um, uh, your productivity, uh, your safety, and your resource utilization in uh, the industrial environment. Uh, while many years ago, uh, we would always worry how can we get another 2 or another 3% uh, productivity uh, out of the shop floor. Um, these days we are looking at the larger span, not only at the shop floor, but also uh, the uh, engineering and the life cycle of the products uh, that we're manufacturing and uh, try to look at productivity levels uh, that are in the, in the range of double digit. And digital is helping us with the fast deployment that, uh, that we have. So we see 10 times more uh, connected uh, devices um, uh, by, uh, by 2020, and uh, obviously this research was done in 2016, but four years in the digital environment uh, is, uh, is like a generation almost uh, that, we, uh, that we need to uh, be, be, be looking at. Now, um, we, um, uh, by the year 2020, we are talking about 30 billion uh, connected things, uh, while we have uh, probably five to six billion connected people uh, we are talking about um, uh, 30 billion uh, connected things. Now, um, obviously, when you're in, in the industrial environment, you would say, well, we, uh, we connected things 50 years ago. Uh, we connected sensors, we connected drives to PLCs, and uh, uh, so a connection in, in a factory is not, uh, uh, is not something new. So what has changed in, in that respect? Well, a, a, couple of, uh, a couple of things have changed in the, uh, in the present digital environment uh, that, uh, that we're in. And um, it is uh, the, um, uh, the speed of communication, the um, availability of processing power, um, the, the bandwidth uh, that we're having, and uh, the cost of connection of one point have uh, totally disrupted over the last years, with uh, processing power virtually being uh, free of charge, uh, connection point, uh, the cost having uh, dropped, bandwidth uh, be available uh, much more than before, and with the implementation of uh, 5G, uh, we will take the next huge step forward. Uh, so with that, uh, we can 
we can start connecting things and transmitting data not only uh, through all the levels of the automation pyramid from a product to a control, from a control to um, a, a SCADA system, from a SCADA system to an ERP system, but we can, uh, we can make this automation pyramid more flat and have um, uh, devices connected um, um, uh, to the cloud and collect, connect, uh, and collect additional data that, uh, we haven't used, um, that we haven't used before. Now, um, uh, artificial intelligence is much more than uh, a buzzword. Even so, it's around for many, many years. I was talking to um, a couple of uh, CEOs yesterday in a round table, and uh, when I was in university in 1989, one of my final theses was on artificial intelligence. Now, um, uh, we were calculating matrices that were um, uh, five variables by five variables, and um, the, the problem was that the computer we were using was not, ha did not have enough processing power to uh, calculate all the mathematic formulas that, uh, that are behind. Um, uh, today, as I said earlier, processing power is virtually unlimited, so you can have matrices of uh, uh, 500 times 500, um, um, and uh, with that you have totally new capabilities in, in doing artificial intelligence and machine learning as uh, one speciality uh, in that. And we are touching um, AI every day. Every day you use your mobile phone, in the background there is some uh, AI engine uh, that will um, give you suggestions, uh, will uh, try to follow your preferences that you have, and um, will try to make your um, life better or <laughs> for, uh, f from, uh, from a supplier's perspective, whoever the supplier is of the digital service, uh, they're, they're trying to, um, uh, to sell more stuff uh, to, to you or make it more uh, flawless. Now, um, with um, uh, augmented reality, which I believe is a very, very critical uh, technology as we go forward, um, meaning augmented reality or virtual reality or mixed realities where, um, you, uh, where you're trying to um, uh, either use a digital representation uh, of, your, of your product or of the plant um, and combine it with real-time data and show uh, and be able to look in a virtual uh, world what's really happening potentially uh, on the shop floor or in your factory. Uh, we have totally new means of um, increasing safety and uh, increasing productivity in the engineering but also in the operations. And I'll show you some examples uh, as, we, uh, as we go forward. Now, um, oh, I need to press in the right direction. Um, and then it's working. Now, the, um, uh, the market that we're, that we're operating in, in is, uh, is, is roughly in the industrial space, uh, 120 billion um, a euro. Why am I showing you this picture? I show you this picture because these two circles are coming together. They're coming together in particular uh, in energy-intensive industries uh, like oil and gas or like in mining uh, operations where, um, or in aluminum, for example, where the cost of energy is a substantial uh, portion of your total cost of, uh, of the product. Now, can we bring energy management and process management uh, much closer together and have them communicate to each other? Well, um, if there is one company on the, uh, on the planet who is able to do that, then it's us, because those are the two areas uh, that, we, um, uh, that we are capable of um, uh, talking about and are capable of uh, delivering uh, technology. So it's uh, very important to have those two further integrated, and as we look into the future, you'll, you'll see much more technology come uh, to have them further integrated and make sure uh, that uh, the right level of um, uh, energy is available at the right point in time in your factory at, um, uh, at the lowest utilization rate that is required in the, uh, in the process. So it's important to look at uh, those two together from a transformational perspective when we deploy um, a digital. Now, um, these numbers are probably, um, again, outdated. They're, they're, um, they become older and older, of course, um, as in the short time frame of digitization we're moving forward. But uh, even, uh, even here, um, the 64% uh, of the executives believe that uh, failure to leveraging digital in their operation uh, will, will cause um, uh, their company to struggle. Uh, if you uh, would have asked this three years ago, and um, I, I, I do this frequently, many people say, well, this digital trend is going to go away. 
um, the, uh, today almost nobody says it will go away. While at the same time, um, in the industrial world, we're probably only using 10%, 10% of the data that we have uh, in our operations um, to, um, uh, to improve uh, safety, um, efficiency, reliability, and um, uh, also to change our business model. Only 10% is used, so there is quite a vast potential. And I'm not saying we need to use 100% of them. We need to use a, a smart, uh, in a smart uh, way the, the, the data. But uh, if you're missing out 90, then um, I, I think uh, the, the level is, uh, is way, way too low. And um, the, uh, we, we do see in, um, in the industrial Internet of Things, uh, we see a growth rate uh, today that's uh, in the neighborhood of uh, 24%. And I'll show you some examples also later on uh, with customers with whom we're dealing with, and these growth rates are not, um, um, are not out, of the, um, um, out of the air, so to say. So it's something we really need to engage in into a new technology, uh, again, in order to increase safety, to increase efficiency, uh, to potentially change our business model, and uh, obviously to um, reduce the number of resources that we're deploying. Um, that's, at the end of the day, what we're worried about. We're not worried about the, a, a great technology. We're worried about the, the benefits that we can generate uh, with those. And here are a couple of uh, things that we've, uh, we've learned in deploying some of that. And uh, by no means I'm going to go through um, I'm going to go through all of them, but a couple of things I want to highlight. Um, as, uh, um, as a manufacturer ourselves, we have 200 factories um, globally, and we said, why don't we deploy more of our digital technologies in our factory uh, to learn more and also to see whether some of the you know, marketing slides that we have that uh, talk about great productivity, whether we can get this out of our factory. So we've, um, we've decided to, um, in the first step, um, take 11 showcase factories, now we're deploying in, uh, uh, in 25 uh, factories um, on a global basis in respect to resource advisors, so where we're looking how much uh, energy, how much water are we using, we're already at 70 factories, that gives us a good understanding uh, how we can reduce the energy usage uh, in the water usage in our factories, that's required because in 10 years from now, roughly 10 years from now, we want to be uh, CO2 neutral, as a, as a company, and uh, we've done this for many years, so we're already in the long tail of things that we need to uh, be doing. Now, um, in uh, two of our showcase factories have been selected by the World Economic Forum as the top, top 10 um, uh, industry 4.0 or smart manufacturing or however you want to call the, this new trend today as uh, two of the best 10 factories uh, on, the, um, on the planet. And um, I'll take customers there on, uh, on a frequent basis because they can talk to the operators. They can talk to the guys on the shop floor to tell them what's the advantage of the deployment of digital technology. And the digital technology was not we, we, we took out all automation equipment. No, we left the factory as it was and we used digital technology to augment the, um, the, uh, uh, the automation that was, uh, that was there. Uh, to give you one example, um, a machine that uh, manufactures contact us, uh, we've had uh, unscheduled downtime uh, per week uh, of roughly uh, 15 minutes. This may not be uh, uh, sound a lot, but 15 minutes, you can produce quite a bit in 15 minutes. So the idea was, how can we use a digital technology uh, to reduce these 15 minutes? So we've used our um, EcoStructure Machine Advisor, which I'm going to be talking about uh, later in, um, um, to uh, deploy virtually um, a service that would allow the maintenance engineer to reduce the um, unscheduled downtime from 15 minutes to three minutes. So that's an 80% reduction. For a week, it's only 12 minutes. Uh, for a month, it's, uh, uh, it's almost an hour. And for, uh, for the year, we've added one day of production. You, you, one day of production is quite a bit if you have a a uh, reasonable size uh, factory, and if you look at the investment that we've done, this was paid off in, in less than, uh, than a year. Now, obviously, um, I think when we can do it, um, our customers can do it, and the, uh, we see our customers uh, um, um, connecting more and more of their assets, more, more of their machinery, more and more of their, their 
um, factories to collect data and to use some of the tools. Uh, we also work with our distributors and with our system integrators to drive deployment of this digital technology uh, out there, as you, as you can see. So for, for us, it's something that we, um, that we believe it will change our company fundamentally, and uh, it will also uh, be able to change the interaction of our OEM customers with their customers fundamentally, and uh, the same is true, of course, as an, as an end user, you can benefit uh, of these, uh, these technology. So um, there are probably four things I want to focus today that I think are the success factors in, in deploying it, because for many people still, a, a digital technology is a kind of a, a lot of buzzwords, and it means what, uh, what is it that I, uh, that I can do. So I think uh, it's very important that uh, we have um, uh, products, tools, and so forth that are very easy to get started with. Um, and uh, in a very reasonable, from a cost perspective, to see some benefit. For that, of course, one needs to have um, a good architecture and uh, a good domain expertise. If I talk about domain expertise, is if uh, our people come to a machine builder, for example, that they know what the machine is used for and that they understand also the mechanics of the machine so that there is a qualified discussion in that respect and how is it used at the, uh, at the end user. So it's important to have a good architecture and a solid platform to it that is also um, uh, open. Um, but then also I've talked about um, um, augmented reality and um, uh, for that one needs to talk about the digital twin which I want to do for, for a minute myself. And then obviously last and not, but not least uh, is the, an ecosystem of partners with whom we are working together because we cannot do it all uh, by ourselves, but we need partners uh, in that uh, space to make, to make it happen. Um, and so they can also add uh, whatever knowledge they have. Uh, so by now you should have uh, um, already been bombarded by the word ecostructure, so I'm not going to go into that in detail. I think two things on this slide I want to uh, talk about. Um, it's the apps, analytics, and services uh, layer, where uh, basically this is the software deployment that we have at Schneider Electric together with our, um, with our software subsidiary, um, Aviva, that's also present here today, where we develop a lot of um, industrial uh, software. The, um, a lot of people uh, come to me and say, if we're talking um, industrial Internet of Things, we talk more connectivity, um, if we're talking potentially deployment in the cloud, uh, I'm a little bit scared in respect to cybersecurity. How do you deal with that, Schneider Electric? And uh, so um, if you haven't had the chance, I'll, I'll encourage you to listen to one of the cyber presentations and also in the Innovation Hub talk about uh, with the experts on cybersecurity uh, because we're in an environment of operational technology where we may have um, PLCs or other equipment uh, deployed that is already 10, 15 years old and uh, may have uh, a software run on it that um, still has some small open gates or that has passwords that you can Google in the internet. Um, and uh, it's important that we're bringing experts to the side who understand the operational technology, who are not scared to open the cabinet, look where are uh, potential um, uh, flaw, flaws in the system, uh, but at the same time they also understand cybersecurity. So with that we've, we've come up with a service that we can deliver to um, to our customers to audit their operations and help them uh, to come up with a clear process and also um, a respective steps to have an, what we call a defense in depth uh, against cyber uh, attacks, in particular important for a more critical infrastructure and um, uh, plans that run on a continuous basis that you cannot shut down easily and uh, uh, so forth. So that's our answer to that. By the way, that's uh, one of the fastest growing businesses that we have at the moment is uh, um, for, the, for the third year in a row, a doubling uh, given the, um, the um, importance that our customers also place uh, to, uh, to, to this one. Now, um, if I talk about the um, integration of industrial engineering software, um, we, um, earlier I said in the past we were looking at gaining productivity uh, basically on the side here of only the, um, the, the operation and the maintenance. So after um, a plant or a facility was built and um, we were trying to optimize on the, on the shop floor. What we believe looking into the future is when, uh, when you start uh, designing uh, a process or designing a plant 
uh, if you do this in uh, a digital way, uh, meaning you start building a digital representation of your, of your factory with a 3D model, uh, and the earlier you know, IoT technologies that I've mentioned and the additional bandwidth that we have in respect to communication, we can bring real-time data. And if I, as an automation engineer, talk about real-time data, I'm not talking seconds or milliseconds, I'm talking fractions or milliseconds, where we can bring data and bring this digital representation of, of a plant uh, to life. And that's uh, when we... Um, when, when I talk about a digital twin, that's what I'm talking about. If you're able to do that, um, you can actually simulate your complete operations digitally. And um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of, of an example here where we have started to merge some of the software that Schneider had developed over the years with um, the acquisition of Aviva that we have, have done uh, and them, them being very good in, um, um, in doing a 3D design. Now, that's um, um, a 3D design here of, of a plant, and uh, we have a little bit um, of, uh, of a pump here. And in red, you see up here, we have a temperature um, uh, alarm indicated in, in red. Now, this is what you, uh, in real time, uh, see on your screen. That was not possible um, two or three years back you would see the temperature alarm, but you wouldn't see the 3D representation to it. You wouldn't be able to zoom into the pump uh, where, the, where the problem is. So um, we've, uh, we've made this possible in the last uh, couple of months after the, um, uh, after the integration of Schneider software and Aviva software together. So um, yeah, some of you may, may know the software Wonderware that has given the temperature alarm in the past. Now what you want to do as a, as a next um, a step is you want to really um, assess and acknowledge that you have a problem in the factory. So here you can look at the pump, you can see uh, you have a temperature problem, you see it's that pump and you can also see are there valves uh, around it that um, where you could isolate uh, the pump, is there a redundant uh, pump that can help you to, to solve the, the, the problem. Now um, while you understand uh, theoretically how to solve the problem, uh, you can do this already digitally. So. You, you, you say, if I do a set point change in my, in my control system, um, I will have a positive impact uh, to the temperature, and the temperature will go down and the alarm will go away. So what you do is you simulate this. In, uh, in the past, you would uh, need to send an engineer down. They, they would try it out and see whether uh, it, it uh, would really happen. Now we can simulate it in real time with real-time data in the, in the plant. And if you see that this is successful, you automatically create a work order. Uh, to, uh, in, and this is a petrochemical site here um, where you need to have a work permit for the service engineer to go on site and actually do the work. So all done electronically in, uh, uh, in, in, in the system. Uh, th and then you schedule this all automatically, in, um, uh, all digitally, and um, within your digital twin, uh, all the work steps you have taken are already digitally reflected, meaning um, nothing has happened on the shop floor, but you know exactly what the, what the workflow is going to be as you go forward. Now, um, now you s the, the service engineer is going on site to do the activity that um, you have simulated that he should do. He's, he, he's uh, executing the inspection and doing the maintenance, doing the control um, point change, and uh, completes his work order. Um, and with that, you the, the desired outcome is uh, also seen in the 3D system, and you can see here, just by the pure color, the, the temperature alarm has gone away. Now, this is a little bit um, uh, a manual um, a video that I've shown you here, but I invite you also to the Innovation Hub to, lo to look at some of the software where uh, we already can show you how that looks in, in real time. Um, I think that's where, um, where the digital uh, life will bring us in, in factories. Now, many of the customers say this is all fine, but I have an infrastructure that's already established. I use uh, a couple of software tools that may not come from Schneider Electric. Uh, that's all fine and all understood and uh, um, we need to build interfaces to, uh, to bring this together and uh, make it work. And if your, your plant is not uh, digitized, what you can do actually today with, um, uh, with uh, scanners, one can go into a plant and scan a plant and reversely create uh, the digital representation of the plant without um, the necessity to, to building it. Now that's... Um, that's a very, um, that was a very simple example 
um, on, the, on the digital uh, twin side that we're driving forward in, in plant automation, in particular in, um, uh, in oil, in gas, in petrochemical, uh, chemical industries, but we're also in, in shipbuilding um, and uh, moving also to some of the metals and uh, uh, mining minerals uh, uh, factories where such software is, uh, uh, is available. Now, the uh, uh, ecosystem of partners is, of course, critical. Why is it critical? Because uh, companies like ours, we may be very large um, from, uh, from your eyes, uh, but um, th there are so many possibilities of functionalities out there that we say our architecture needs to be open. It needs to be open to enable uh, partners, and these may be digital alliance partners, these may be technology partners, this may be uh, just system integrators or advanced distributors, uh, to be able to develop applications on the basis of um, uh, our ecostructure platform and sell it to their customers. And as we go forward, not only sell it to their customers that are geographically very close uh, together to them, but um, uh, openly publish their products on, um, on a platform that allows uh, customers somewhere else in the world to look at the application saying, this is a partner I want to work with, and uh, through the platform, then um, uh, discuss together. Um, so from that perspective, it's very important for us to have developers and system integrators who work on uh, our software, who can work on our automation equipment, and you can see the number of uh, people who have that uh, capability today. And uh, I invite everybody to, um, uh, to discuss with us also how to, how to become a partner in that, in that respect or uh, offer digital services that we may not have. Now, today we have uh, 1.6 million assets uh, deployed. That's a, a number probably uh, already uh, outdated sometime earlier this year. You see the growth rate. Uh, this is actually um, happening. It's not happening on a small scale. Uh, that means um, uh, almost uh, three, 400,000 uh, additional connections every year um, in order to analyze data and uh, help our customers to increase safety, productivity, and resource availability. While we guarantee that uh, the data that is generated by our customers is the property of the customer and is protected after all applicable laws uh, that, uh, that are out there. Um, we, are, we are not the ones that uh, eat your data and uh, do funny things with it without you um, uh, knowing it. Now, um, and I give you a couple of examples here what, uh, what we do with customers in, in respect uh, to uh, deploying some of the ecostructure solution here. Ecostructure plant, we're talking um, about a um, sugar manufacturer in, um, in uh, uh, South, America, uh, uh, South Africa, and um, they needed to, um, they had a plant, but they weren't happy with their productivity, so they took out parts of the control systems, wanted to add digital features to it, uh, in order to improve the uptime that uh, they had to uh, scale the operations, of course, and um, uh, do this with very local support. So our system integrator uh, locally in, in uh, South Africa worked with the customer and us together uh, to do an implementation of um, a historian function. He brought in our latest uh, control system and um, then also started connecting it uh, to, uh, to the Wonderware system platform uh, with the historian function in order to optimize the, the manufacturing. The results were pretty um, impressing, uh, impressive uh, for a factory that was already there with the new systems, 40% uh, improvement of uh, lost time available. And uh, um, that means uh, a substantially uh, higher output at the end of the day. Every time um, you, you miss um, and you, you need to stop, it means no output. And the reverse means, of course, uh, more output. And um, with that, you can see the increment of, of production, 39%. That's pretty impressive for, um, for a factory that was um, already there. Now, how can I get started uh, as, um, um, as a customer that um, may not have had experience to digital and maybe has the fear of uh, a, a, like of the past where we had large as uh, large uh, ERP systems coming in and um, we um, we got hooked by the ERP supplier and um, it cost a lot of money and it continues to cost a lot of money and uh, sometimes we're asking ourselves where's the where's the benefit so our approach is let's start small with small applications 
at a very reasonable cost in order to allow you to see what the benefits um, are. Now, uh, we've, uh, we've worked with um, a local um, machine manufacturers, Oeselig, um, who's uh, producing uh, aluminum and uh, uh, PVC profiles that, uh, that are used to build windows. And uh, so that's um, um, operations like a, a cutting, a drilling, and um, welding. Um, of, uh, of that together. So uh, one of the challenges that we, that we had, of course, these machines existed and we said uh, we think we're able to deliver an open platform to UPC based where you can add knowledge of yourself while at the same time we'll reduce the, the time um, to market for you, meaning the engineering time. And uh, we've proven that within three weeks we'd able to convert the machine here to, uh, to EcoStructure uh, machine um, with an open PC-based uh, platform where they could add uh, technology to it. And um, uh, since that, uh, I think we're in the second year of um, uh, uh, him selling those machines where, where he was able to ramp it up in from the first year to the second year by the factor of three. So allowing him uh, to, to grow and um, the, the benefits was really the reduced time to market, faster integration and an open platform that allowed him to add um, and that's what I uh, said in this case, he's a technology partner himself. He adds onto our uh, technology platform knowledge that, uh, that he has. Now, um, the, uh, the next step that we're working with, uh, with him and other customers is to deploy uh, some digital services uh, of, um, of machine, meaning uh, we want to uh, allow our OEMs that they connect the machines that they've sold to their end customer. If the machine is connected, then we can start deploying digital services like monitor. We can monitor the machine. We know exactly what the performance of the machine is. We can predict uh, whether um, a certain access may fail in the future. We have the ability to, um, uh, to allow the end customer to get the maximum productivity out of the machine. And then, uh, potentially, uh, if there is a failure with um, EcoStructure uh, Machine Advisor Fix, um, this is an augmented um, reality uh, tool set. Uh, we will allow the, the end user to look uh, through his mobile device at the machine. The mobile device will automatically detect the machine. And for example, you can, on your iPad, you can open the cabinet of the machine without opening it. So it's virtually opened. Uh, that has the great advantage that um, technicians who may not know everything, they cannot touch um, uh, you know, dangerous el electrified units in the, uh, in the machinery, but can look at real-time data. They can get online uh, the right documentation to, uh, to fix a mistake. And uh, with that, um, uh, downtime can be significantly reduced. That's the example I was talking earlier about what we're also deploying in our factory. So from that perspective, uh, really easy to get started with, with cost-effective um, um, scaling of some of the advisors that we have. Invite you again to, to look at them. Um, if you are in a plant and you look at a larger scale of integration of industrial engineering software, I think the complete suite of a digital a twin is, is available, including a complete um, um, a simulation to it. Our ecosystem of partners is very, very important, and as we go forward, we'll bring more on board. We'll make sure that they are trained and that they can also uh, help you in case you need local help and uh, we cannot furnish it. And of course, the basis for that is the domain know-how that we want to bring to the party with an open, um, scalable um, architecture platform um, uh, ecostructure to help you in the digital transformation and be able also ready for the future to deploy new technologies that come maybe not only from us but also from others. That's why this platform needs to be open. Uh, that's in uh, um, 28 minutes uh, what I think is going to happen in, in industry. Um, uh, a very quick movie, so to say. I, ho I hope um, something important was uh, there for you as well and uh, some thought-provoking ideas. Um, invite you again to the Innovation Hub and look at some of uh, the, the solutions that were uh, showing there at uh, EcoStructure Machine and EcoStructure Plant. Thank you very much.